Okay, uh, in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use MySQLi to connect to the database we create in the first video, school DB and table students. Uh, I already have created a project on uh, PHPStorm, so I'm going to create a file. Uh, just to let you know that I have created this project inside the ZAMP HEDOCS folder. Uh, so I just simply go ahead and call PHP file F1 to be able to follow up with the file creation for this tutorial. Uh, so regardless of which database uh, connectivity you want to use or connection you want to use, you want to use MySQLi, MySQLi procedural or object oriented or PDO, there are a few steps you have to take. Uh, the very first step is to uh, uh, connect to database. Right? Uh, the second one uh, or second step is uh, to validate the connectivity, so validation. And uh, the third step is uh, query preparation. And fourth step is to uh, for the query execution. And finally, manage the data information okay so these are the steps you have to take first you got to connect to the database you got to make sure the connection is valid you connected already so that's the second step because if you don't make the connection to the database there is no way to do anything on the database three you have to prepare the query that you want to execute on the server Four, you have to execute the uh, query and then finally you have to manage the information that you uh, get based on the query execution. Either you update or select the information that is where you start doing that. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, as I said, this one, we're going to use MySQL I procedural. So this means we're gonna have many uh, function call. Uh, so first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a connection to the database. Uh, so I can call it uh, DB connection or dbcon. Uh, is equal MySQL I. Uh, I'll call the MySQL I connect, uh, which it gives you or it requires this information. First, it requires the host. Now, this host can be an IP address, a domain name. Since I'm running this locally, I use localhost. It requires the username. Uh, all ZAMP MySQL database uh, comes with the root user, which has no password. So I'm just leaving the password as an empty string. And then simply you have to specify the uh, database name. Uh, in our case, it was called uh, school DB, right? So let's let's go ahead and run this first. I, I just want to ward up uh, the DB connect uh, to see what do I get, right? So I just go ahead. I already have this one open here. So I run this and uh, undefined variable DB connect because I added an extra T at the end. So I'm just gonna remove that and run this one more time. Here you go, I got a lot of information. Uh, this, this is good news. So when you see this, it means something came back as a reference, as an object to something. So this means it's okay. Now, uh, so as long as I'm okay with this, the next step is to make sure I have connected successfully. In order to do that, I need the F statement. So I'm going to use, again, MySQL I, uh, connect error number uh, if this is greater than zero really saying greater than zero is optional because if it cannot be a negative number is most of the time it is uh, either zero or a positive number uh, but just to make it clear so I just say if it's greater than zero uh, and if this is happening if I go inside this statement it means uh, I cannot do anything with database I could not make the connection I simply have to shut down everything there are many different ways of dealing with this, but at this time, I just want to simply make my program to die. So I'm saying uh, uh, cannot connect to database, right? Uh, I can show the error message if I want to by just going here and say MySQL I connect error. So this simply will attach the error message there as well. So let's let's go ahead and create an error message. So I'm going to add AAA as password. We know that the root has no password, it's an empty password. So this should cause me a problem. So if I go here, access deny for user local using password yes, Q 
cannot connect to database access to now. So I can guess simply this is the message that I get right in here, right? Uh, so connection is good. The next one is preparing the query. So what do I do? Uh, I just have to write the query. Let's say if I go here and I want to select everything from this table, uh, I just simply go to the SQL and I write something like this. Select everything from student. That's how you select everything from the student's table, right? I got to write the exact same thing. So what I'm going to do is to make things easier for myself. So I create a variable, I call it query, and simply drop the whole query I got from uh, MySQL in here. I could have write that too. Keep in mind, uh, from and select are uppercase to just identify the command because these are uh, the MySQL command are not case sensitive. Uh, so done with this, I usually make sure that query that I wrote has no error. Although I copy this, but most of the time when you type this, I, I really encourage you to test this. So I go ahead and uh, run this one more time. Uh, since I took the message out at the password dot, there is no error. So I just copy this, go back to SQL, uh, put this one in, click I OK. Since I don't have any data in that table, so it's going to be OK. So let's go ahead and add some value here. Since the first one is auto increment, I do not insert any value, but I will call this student one and call one one and it is active. So I add another one, I call it student two and call it two two and I just simply hit the enter. Now, if I go and browse on PHP, my admin, I can simply see this. So if I go back to SQL and run the command that I echoed, I should get those two value. So everything is good up to now, right? So let's go back to our PHP storm and try to run the rest. So now that I have the query running, everything is okay. What I have to do is I simply have to go and execute this query. How do we execute this? Well, Good news is uh, MySQL I has some, uh, some functions that can be used. MySQL I query allows you to run this, but the very first thing it needs, it needs the connection. So I would just simply send uh, the DB connection. And the second one, of course, is the query. So the DB connection identifies, identifies which database, the one that we opened at the beginning, and the query is what command to execute. Now what happened is MySQL query, MySQL I query will go to the server, execute this command. If everything goes well, it will return a reference to the result or result set or whatever data is passed or uh, uh, returned by MySQL server. So that is why in this case, I would just simply save everything into the result variable. Uh, so let's, let's just see what we have in the result. So I just go ahead, word dump result. I can result and go back here, refresh this. So I get a bunch of information here. Again, uh, we good. As soon as we see this, it means something we, we do these things right. All right. Uh, of course, uh, one other way is uh, since I do select, if it returns something, if it's return a record, I can simply know that the, uh, the, the command was successfully executed and some records are returned. Uh, one way to know the number of uh, rows that are returned, I can simply go ahead and use another function called MySQLI um, uh, num rows, uh, which requires the result because the result is pointing to where this information are saved and simply can go there, count the number of rows and tell me how many rows we have. So if I do this, simply tells me there are two rows in database. And if you remember when I select this, I just got two rows. Okay. Now that we have this, uh, I'll just comment this for now. And I want to retrieve this information. Since there are multiple rows uh, here, uh, we have to loop through this information. So there are different ways of getting this information uh, as, as how we can fetch this information from that location. Uh, we certainly use a loop. So in this case, I would just simply go ahead and say while uh, MySQL I, sorry, let me write it this way so you understand it better. MySQL I uh, fetch. Now there are so many ways. Look at this. We have fetch array, fetch all, fetch associate, fetch field. So many different ways we can do this. Uh, for this one, I, I just use fetch array for now. And uh, simply what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the result because result knows where the information are. MySQL I fetch array will go to that location 
by using the result direction and get the data. So what it does is it goes to that location, get one row at a time and return it back. So I need something to store that information, which is the row, right? So I save that into a row variable. If everything goes well and the data are coming back, the result of what we have inside this while loop is true. So our while loop will continue looping. If anything goes wrong, like false, no data, and so on, the whole thing becomes false and while loop will stop. So what I'm going to do here is I just go ahead and echo and I say row uh, values. Uh, I want to print all the values. There's so many ways of doing this. I will use print R as to print. This is an array when it comes back, actually. So to print this, so I'll pass the true since I want printer to return the value so I can concatenate this with the echo string. So I just go ahead and type true here as well. And of course, as soon as I do this, I want to have a separator. So I just put a horizontal ruler here. Uh, let's go see if everything is okay. So row values. So I just do this. There you go. We got this. So we got ID. We got the student name. We got the student ID and the active. So as you can see, the first name is a student. Uh, the name first student name is a student ID one and two. Uh, there are many different ways of dealing with this. I can go ahead and say echo. Uh, for instance, I can say name. Okay, and I can add this row. If I look at the database, the way I get the data is in the same order as ID is the first column, name is the second column, right? So I go back here and I will say give me the name and then I attach this and I will say uh, student ID and simply I can go ahead and say attach row two right and of course at the end I'll go ahead and I'll put a BR this time so it goes to the next line let's look at the code one more time uh, the output one more time see what happens so if I go here, as you can see, I can collect those information. So we're done. We, we connect, we retrieve the data using the SQL statement, we look through them and so on. Now that we are done working with this, we got to make sure that we free the result because the result is pointing to somewhere in the memory to those data and close the connection as well. To do that, we simply go ahead and use MySQL free uh, result and we pass the result. And also we go ahead and do MySQL I close uh, and we pass the connection that's all it is to connect to the database now your query can be as complicated as you want but all the result no matter what is your query will be retrieved the same way that I show here I hope you enjoyed the video in the next video I'm going to show you how to do the same thing using MySQL I uh, object-oriented version